let me start from here because majority of our decisions stem from our feelings, right? And if you really think about it, our feelings are what evoke a lot of our reactions pretty much to everything that's happening around us, right? Or, or with us. So think about that. Whatever happens around you or with you is literally due to because of your feelings, right? And <clears throat> this dates back, I mean, to centuries, okay? It dates way back. It goes as far back as the whole yin and yang situation. Every time you hear that theory or that statement, you need to be aware that one thing affects another. And this is what I'm talking about. Our feelings impact our reactions to things that are happening around us, right? So let's give a, a quick backstory of, of the term yin and yang. So, so that we have... A baseline, I guess, right? I want to kind of start us off with a baseline, a foundation to establish for this conversation. And and so that we are all on the same page and so that we don't go off track and so that I, I hold myself accountable so that I don't go off track, okay? So yin symbolizes, you know, stillness, um, a softness, a quiet, right? A, a contraction, and, and deep thought, contemplation, okay? But I guess I can summarize it and say it's, it's kind of like uh, meditating. <laughs> Yin has always been synonymous with a feminine energy. Just so we're clear though, right? All living beings have both masculine and feminine energy. It's just a matter of when one shows up, right? Things like um, the ocean, a cool a temperament that is cool or dark um, temperatures, right? The shade, the moon, right? And, and even winter are associated with the yin, right? So I hope that helps, right? I'm just trying to give you a visual aid to, to, to understand or a framework for you to kind of make sure you stay on top of this. This conversation that I'm going to have with you. And the yang symbolizes movement, right? The expansion, um, action. It symbolizes growth, uh, heat. And so keep that in mind. So we have stillness. Then we have, you know, movement, action. So we need to have balance. When something happens, you can be still about it. Or you can take action. Right? And these are things that we do on a regular basis. So keeping that in the back of your mind, what does this mean? Um, yin, we know stillness, is calmness. It's almost like a meditative state, deep thought processing, right? It's a slow reaction to things. Uh, then you have the yang where it's just like, boom, we're taking it. We're going, we're taking it by the horn, we're doing it, we're reacting. And if you really pay attention to that, where we talk about the feminine energy and the masculine energy, men are people of action. We don't dwell on things too much. We like to do. Women like to process. They're all deep within themselves and, you know, trying to think and feel things out. Um, indecisive. <laughs> you really want to um, throw it out there, right? But they're less likely to decide than men. Right, we are more like you know what, let's do it. We'll think about it later, All right? Or when the consequences present itself, we'll address it then. So, yang is synonymous with the masculine energy, and it represents the sun. All right, it's light, expansiveness, and at times it can even be you know reckless, right? But if you really frame it out, it's risk taking. It's being more assertive, um, it's action-oriented, discipline is required, objectivity, logic, right? And very analytical, but not to the point of becoming stagnant, right? It's also a form of confidence and survival. So now we understand what the yin is and what the yang is. So now I can kind of continue where I want to take this conversation with you guys.